Greetings! I am super excited to bring this video to you. I'm actually excited to bring all my videos to you, but this one's a little more special. This week is the one year anniversary that I have been a nomad traveling around the country and around the world. I sold everything that I own and left my house in Phoenix one year ago. Here's me leaving Phoenix. In this video, I am going to be sharing with you the three things that I'm finding I love most about being a, a nomad traveler. I'll share the three, what I would say are some of the biggest challenges, and one of them's, one of them's a little embarrassing to share, so you'll want to stay tuned for that. And I'm going to be real and authentic, and I'll even put a picture in there. Uh, and then the third thing I'm going to share is three just interesting observations, just things that I really hadn't anticipated, but but how being a solo nomad traveler has affected me. So really quickly, a little bit about me. This week is kind of that right in the middle. I am one year on the road as a solo traveler. I am two years out from becoming a widow. And if you'd like to follow along in my journeys through my journey through grief, which this has been a very healing opportunity for me, and if you'd like to follow me in my journey through grief, my journeys around the world, my travels, how I'm able to fund this lifestyle, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. And let's go travel the world together. So here's the three things I love about being a nomad traveler. And real quickly, I know this question is going to come up. I am not traveling in an RV or a trailer. A lot of people will say, are you in an RV or an SUV? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm actually traveling in my car and I primarily live in timeshare resorts because my husband and I had a lot of timeshare points banked and I realized that if I did it right, I would be able to live for at least a year to a year and a half out of timeshares and I'm actually stretching that farther and I found some other inexpensive ways to travel, which I'll share on this channel as well. So with that, no, I travel in my car. This is what it looks like when i am all fully loaded up and this is what it looks like if i'm going to be someplace for more than a week and i bring everything into the resort this is everything i own the first thing is i don't ever have to clean a house i have housekeeping when i'm staying in resorts housekeeping comes in once a week and i always know which day that they're going to come in and clean they change my beddings, they replace the towels, they vacuum, they mop, they dust. Like I never have to clean a house. And I'm, I'm kind of digging that. I will, I'll admit I'm kind of digging that. The next thing is I have no household expenses. And a lot of people will say, well, how can you afford to live this lifestyle? It actually isn't any more than what I was paying when I was living in my house. It was a four bedroom house in Phoenix. And the reason is I don't have utility bills. I don't pay for electrical, gas, sewer. I don't pay for cable. I don't pay for Wi-Fi service. I don't have to buy toilet paper, paper towels. And so uh, the typical household expense budget that somebody has, I don't have that. I, everything is provided for me when I check into these resorts. And, and the third thing, and this is huge, I get to live in some of the most incredible places. And I'm going to put some pictures up here as I'm describing this. I had the opportunity to live in St. Martin and my balcony looked right down on the water in Daytona Beach, Florida. And looking outside my window is just the beautiful Atlantic Ocean. I just got back from a one month trip to England and I took a cruise to get there. And then once I was there, I got to see some incredible places. I went to Bath and I went to Stonehenge. And so this lifestyle is allowing me by trading my household expenses, I get to see some of the most incredibly beautiful places on this planet. And I will say that is absolutely the, the most incredible part of this journey and some of the adventures. I went to White Sands National Park, Carlsbad Caverns, Grand Canyon, 
and uh, it just some incredible Sedona is absolutely beautiful and there's some other videos on this channel if you want to check out some of these different places and I'll be putting a few more up in the future as well so here's a couple of the challenges that I run into when I lived in Phoenix and I was flying to a destination I always knew that I would be looking at flights out of Phoenix Sky Harbor Airport and there's another airport not too far from from Phoenix and so between one of those two airports is where I would plan to fly out of now if I am planning travels it's it's a challenge lining up my my resort destinations together with flights and I don't know where I'm going to be when I am flying to that destination so a lot of times I'm looking up flights out of Jacksonville and Miami and Orlando and and Phoenix and and Missouri and I'm I'm looking at Charlotte North Carolina like I'm I'm researching all these different major airports so that I could figure out where I will then plan my travel prior to my international trip and it's a lot, a lot of work I didn't realize how much work it would take but that's um, probably one of the biggest struggles that I have in planning my my travels and my trips is is the transportation because I don't know where I'm going to be before and after each trip. The second challenge that I have is as a solo traveler, I didn't realize the additional expenses and sometimes the inability to even do things because I'm a solo traveler. There have been tours that I've not been able to go on because they won't allow a solo passenger. I've usually been able to kind of work my way around it and somehow be able to still be on a tour or I'll find a friend in town to go with me. But, but some tours don't allow a, a single individual to even book the ticket. I have to show up and hope that there will be availability on some other tour. If I am cruising and I wanna have a solo cabin, it's based on per person double occupancy. If I were to go to an all-inclusive resort or something along those lines, it's double occupancy. And so as a solo traveler, the ch I didn't realize the challenge, especially with tours. I, I really had no idea how difficult it would be quite often to just go do a tour that I wanna go and, and take because they won't, even, they won't even allow me to book the ticket on the website. I have to show up and hope there's availability. And so that's been a real challenge for me. And the next thing, this one's kind of embarrassing. I am, I am in my 60s and this is not my natural hair color. I'm not necessarily a spring chicken anymore. And maintaining this color takes a little bit of work and effort. And knowing that I'm traveling, my hairdresser before I hit the road hooked me up with all the professional supplies that she used on my hair. And so I do my own hair color and it's a little bit of a challenge because I want to make absolutely sure that I don't, I don't stain or discolor anything in a resort where I am doing this. And so I have to be really, really careful. And then once I have colored my hair, if, you, if you're somebody who colors your hair, you know that you turn the pillowcases that color, you turn the towels that color, and every resort has white linens, white towels. And so I have to bring my own towels and linens to use for about a week while I'm while everything's pink coming off my hair after dyeing it red. And, and it's that's a real challenge. And what I'm now realizing, because I'm doing more international travel, and sometimes I am gone for about a month, I don't want to bring all my hair products with me on the airplane to another place. And so now it's the timing of when I am going to do a hair color and where I'm going to be. I never realized how difficult it would be, but I'm not quite willing to let go of the red. What are your thoughts? <laughs> should I go natural or should I? I could, I really like being a redhead. And so I'm not, I'm, I'm going to like let go of it kicking and screaming. I really didn't know what to expect when I was going to hit the road. And here's just three observations that I'll share with you. First of all, when I first started, every morning I would wake up and I'm like, where am I? Like, where's the bathroom? And, and where am I going today? And it was like, that would be the first thought in my brain because I, I was not in my bed. And it's like, where am I? And I don't even think that anymore. It just doesn't matter. I'll figure it out soon enough. So I wake up and I just enjoy that waking up process. 
And once I'm kind of fully awake, obviously when I get out of bed, I, I, oh yeah, I remember where I am. Oh yeah, I remember where I'm going. And so that's been kind of interesting, just that mind shift from where am I every morning to it just doesn't matter. I'm home, wherever that is. Speaking of that, I don't have a house, but I do have a home. And I've realized home is where the heart is. And what I'm finding is in my language when I'm speaking with somebody, I may say, I need to get back home. Well, that home for me is the resort where I am staying at a given time. Or I may say to somebody, I'm going to be flying back home. And when I say flying back home, I am flying to the next destination where I will be. And it's interesting because I don't have a house. I do not have a permanent residence. I domicile and all my mail goes to a friend's house. But home is where your heart is and home is wherever I am at the time. And it's weird because when I first left my home in Phoenix, I felt like I didn't have I didn't have any sense of permanency and I, I still don't. But I realize I'm home wherever I am. I am home. And finally, I am completely unencumbered. I don't have any bills or debts. I have a, a car payment, but it's at 0% interest. I don't have any stuff. I have no attachments to things. I have no attachments to being in any given place at any given time. And because of that, there is a sense of freedom that I never anticipated. And, and even when I was planning this nomad lifestyle, I, I envisioned what it could be. I just didn't really realize what it's like to live a life free from the everyday stresses that we normally encounter in our home. You know, the, the schedule that we're living by. I don't have a schedule anymore. I'm always in a different place. The, the obligations and, and things that you have to do as a homeowner, I don't have any of that. And so it's, it's just been such an incredible, unencumbered feeling and stress-free life. And I, I was hoping that that's what it would be. And it truly is how, how I'm experiencing it. Hopefully this has been kind of a, a fun video, enlightening for those of you who love to travel. And again, I invite you to hit that subscribe button. It's totally free. Follow me on my journeys, follow me on my journey through grief, my journeys around the world, how I fund my lifestyle. I'll be sharing videos on all of that. You'll always be in You'll always be alerted whenever I post a new video here. And with that, I wish you an absolutely wonderful day and let's go see the world.